Okay, this is gonna be kind of weird. I wanna talk about this haptic coin, diamond hex haptic coin. So it's made of a, a copper and nickel alloy. It's called copper nickel. It's really cool. So it's machine finish, which means it's got this super beautiful machine lines all over it. But as you might be able to tell, it started out completely silver and I've been using it for a few days and it is rapidly aging. Like now in this light, it's not really silver anymore. It's starting to turn a little more gold. I have nickel on one of my favorite knives. Um, I'll, I'll go grab it. So I have nickel on this knife, which is my favorite knife I own. This is my Buck Knives Spire or something like that, I believe. So the ends are both nickel. And these have aged quite a bit since I've gotten them. There is quite a lot of aging going on right there. So that is like kind of what I'm scared of this doing. I don't know if my chemical balance is especially susceptible. You can see, you can kind of see here the silver difference. Like it's just not the same. And this is a little darker, a little yellower. So this is the nickel and this is stainless steel. All I know is it's getting really bad. Uh, it's getting really dark in the corners and I don't actually really like that look. I like the very straight silver look of this haptic coin. So I do wanna review it um, in its base finish. Copper and nickel, it's very, very heavy. Easily the heaviest haptic coin that I own because I own the aluminum V2 and the titanium mini. This is a little larger than the Mini and a little smaller than the uh, original V2. It's pretty good. Um, I really enjoy it. I wish it was a little smaller. I prefer the Mini size. I really like small fidgets. Um, the Frag from Damn Designs is my favorite spinner I own. Uh, and the Mini is probably still my favorite haptic coin. But I love the design of this one a lot. It's got that just super angular design, which is the reason why I love Damn Designs fidget spinners so much. And it's holds true um, with Umbury's diamond hex haptic coin or hex diamond haptic coin. So the click is really, really nice. Obviously how it works is the two halves of the shells separate, they come back down and it clicks. This clicks really crisp, which I really like. One of my problems with the original or the, or the V2 rather is that it just sounds like crap when you actually click it. This sounds really good. It's easily the crispiest click out of all three. Cody, the guy who makes these, has definitely got the click down, the magnet strength, everything. And it makes this super satisfying to use. I have one problem with it. Umbury actually made a post on their page about this. A lot of people are having troubles with it being very slippery, and I was too. He said he puts a coating on uh, after or before he ships them that kind of is meant to preserve the finish. Apparently you can easily take it off with some isopropyl alcohol or time. So I spent a lot of time using this the past couple days and I think I've worn it off, hence why it's starting to patina and change color um, with my oils from my skin. And I really, really do not like that look. Um, I think it would look cool eventually, but the in-between stages, kind of like when you're growing your hair out, icky. It's been very slick for me, especially the first day or two. It was just so extremely slick, but I've used it a lot in the past couple days, and I think I've worn the coating that he put on it straight off the top and bottom of the coin. So it's become a little easier to use. I've found a groove with it. It's been easier to click. This has definitely been the most challenging half the coin to use, just because I find that if you're on these corners here, which are flat, it's really hard to get a grip on with my middle finger, which is normally where I rest on the edge of the haptic coin. If I do it on these other ones, which are two facets that come together, that tends to give me a lot more grip. And that's particularly how I move this haptic coin. Same thing with on the top, I have to use these corners rather than these corners in order to get a good grip on it. That being said, a way to change the color of this, to make sure it doesn't patina like this, uh, and give more grip, would be to use brass black. Now, I used brass black on one of my favorite spinners, uh, the Votri 
from Fidget HQ. They sent it to me for free years ago when fidget spinners were a huge thing. And I eventually did a hammer and brass black on some of the flats and then a mirror polish around the sides. The brass black luckily does not come off. It's a chemical change. It is a uh, very permanent and it's really freaking cool looking. Cody Umberger, the guy who runs Umbury, actually said that you can do that to this. Um, obviously this isn't made of brass, but brass black apparently will age this and kind of anodize it like the titanium haptic coin. In my opinion, has the best grip of all of the haptic coins. The aluminum one is atrociously slippy, slippery, um, and this one is kind of slippery, and I just don't like the way it's patinaing so far. So I'm just gonna brass black it, I think. Yeah, I'm a little worried. I don't quite know how I'm going to do it. I wanna put some brass black on it, and we'll see what happens. Let me tape it off real quick, just so I don't get any brass black in the, um, in the bearing area, um, which would be which would be in here, you can see where it's a lot more silver than out here. Isn't that crazy? How much shinier that is. I'm also gonna put the bearing in a little case so it doesn't like dry out because I think there's lube on it. Um, and we'll brass black the tops. I don't know if I'm gonna do a pattern or what. We'll see. Okay, what I've done is uh, I put them on some packaging tape. I'm going to now take some isopropyl alcohol and rub off whatever gunk is on this top layer here. Maybe you could stop to prefer men who always make you You know, I didn't actually do that much to these, but they're looking much more gold to the eye now. And it's kind of weird. So this can, um, antique brass, copper, or bronze. Clean metal parts are already blocked with birchwood or denaturated alcohol. Rinse the cold water, brighten area with fine steel wool, clean again and rinse. Apply blast back with saturated swab allow, which work one minute, rinse with cold water and wipe dry. Polish with light, soft, clean cloth. Repeat steps three, five, three, four, and five to untain a darker color. I've got the brass black. I'm going to do it on the side I dislike most, which happens to be this one. We'll see what happens. Here we go. I see why he said to do that. Does this dissolve this? Let's find out. No. Allow to work one minute. This is gonna look nuts. We'll get a better shot of the second one. Hmm, I kind of fucked up. I should have just dunked the whole thing because now I have like these scars where there was more brass black than the rest. So that kind of sucks. I just kind of ruined the finish. But I am going to put the other side in over here and we'll try it again. Full minute starting now. That looks a lot better. There's still a little bit of it but not much. I'm honestly gonna put this side back in. That vaguely helped. I don't know that it really helped enough, but it did make some slight changes to this one here. So, this is what they look like. And there's a couple dents in them because I dropped them like right there. Um, I've generally evened this one out a lot more you can still see there's some imperfections on it. Yeah, you can see it right there. But this one looks really, really good. But uh, it's evened out a lot more, so I'm actually really excited. I'm gonna leave these out for, it says 24 hours. Um, I'm not really worried about that, but I'm gonna leave them out for a while, so. There it is. It looks pretty sweet. It's been about, 12 hours. It looks pretty good. This side is a little not as good. Kind of see it right there. It's a little streaky for some reason. I think it's just because I used the Q-tip on it, uh, but it looks nuts. For a color comparison, obviously here is my you know, dark gray mini half the coin, the hex diamond. It is much darker. Uh, here's a reference for like the stainless steelish color it was before. So that's pretty insane. Uh, I think it looks really good. I still don't want to use it too much because it says overnight for the brass black to like actually use it and touch it and stuff all the time. So I'm not going to touch it 
Um, cause overnight is the most vague thing I've ever heard. Overnight could be five to eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. I don't know. So it's been about 12, basically had it sitting on some paper towel for that time until I put the bearing back in a couple hours ago and now it's just sitting out. Um, so we'll see what happens with it. I'm hoping that the finish kind of evens out because the longer it's been sitting, the more the finish has been evening out. So it just looks like if you're using brass black, at least on copper nickel, uh, the longer you have the brass black on, um, the more it'll even out if you kind of screwed up like I did and followed the directions, which I shouldn't have. Uh, I should have just straight up dunked it in the first time. But it looks really good. I'm super excited. Actually, I really, really like the way it turned out. Um, I'm just hoping that the finish lasts, which I'm sure it will because it's a chemical change. And I'm hoping that it just is more fun to use. So I'll update you, but for now, I have to get ready to stream, and I don't know what I'll be playing tonight. But yeah. I still feel it. So, obviously it's been a while, and you can see that there's some wear and tear happening to the finish. I'm obviously recording this the day it's going up, so yeah. But I use it a good bit, and the scarring is still definitely there. It kind of looks cool, but it also kind of looks dumb because that's not what I want it to look like. There's some crazy wear and tear happening along the major points of contact here uh, on both sides and on the corners. It actually looks really good. Um, I really do like the way it turned out. I just wish it would stay the perfect flat black you saw earlier because that looked dope but this also looks really good the more i'm using it the more i'm thinking about redoing the brass black again just to seeing what happens if i do it a second time and leave it in a lot longer but i don't know if i quite have the balls for that uh anyway like the title of this vlog actually says this is a review of this haptic coin uh the hex diamond uh, in Cupernickel from Umbury. I really, really like it. I would absolutely recommend if you can get your hands on one of these and you like haptic coins, you like clickers, you like fidget toys, this is a good one. I think if you don't like your hands smelling like metal, this probably isn't it because it does have a serious metal smell. Because it's made of copper and nickel, it is going to like make your hands smell after using it for a while because that's just how it be. But I really like it. I think it's super fun. And uh, Umbury's best work. It's a little expensive, though. It's like $90 for one of these things. So be aware of that. It is like pocket art type expensive stuff. Other than that, this is a vlog as well. So I do want to recap the end of the week. However, I do want to talk more about the specifics of what happened with this vlog. So this vlog is late, one, because uh, I streamed a lot. Uh, and two, there's like another... 25 minutes worth of raw footage I haven't edited into this vlog. Um, mostly because it's a review of Godzilla vs. Kong, and I didn't want to cram two reviews uh, into one video. And I'm just going to make the Godzilla vs. Kong review a separate video that's not a, a vlog, a numbered vlog. Uh, it's just going to be its own thing. Uh, and then this will be this week's vlog. So thanks for bearing with me on that. <laughs> Uh, other than that, the music in this, obviously, is Andrew Apple Pie, like usual. This song is called Loser. And then now on to the work breakdown for this week. So this week is week 96. It's a little shorter this week than usual. Um, this week and the week after, I kind of was having a problem with taking breaks and, and just feeling kind of lethargic. So I wasn't streaming as much as I should have been. That being said, it's, it's nowhere near bad. It's no 20, 25 hours. But it's 2,245 minutes, which is 37 hours and 25 minutes. So about three hours shy of that 40-hour minimum I like to hit um, nowadays. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. You can feel free to stick around and subscribe here. I upload a vlog every single week. Uh, or you can feel free to follow me on Twitch, where I stream every single night around 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash thescallyhq. Play a lot of first-person shooters and a lot of Minecraft recently as well. Other than that, thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Favorite the video if it was your favorite. Don't forget to share the video, subscribe for more, and of course, I'll see you later. Take care.